Hi, this is Anthony, parent of Iris Medic, and it is really exciting to be back. We had a uh, we had uh, our last video is getting a lot of response, and we're uh, rebuilding our community a little bit. And people are a little bit fired up about uh, us getting going again. And you know what? Honestly, we're a bit fired up too. I have my good friend John Richardson with me. Good morning, John. And I have we have Keith uh, uh, Keith Redman with us as well. So today's topic is um, we're going to be talking about um, how there's really no incentive to come into the U.S. tax system. Um, and then at the end of the video, we're going to be answering some of the questions from our last video. Um, and then there might be a little surprise. Uh, I've been working on a song. But before we get to that, Keith has an update about um, a, a French FACA lawsuit go going on. What's, go what's the update on that, Keith? Well, it's actually not the fact, French FACTA lawsuit, which is separate, but what the update oh, okay. is about is, that's okay, what the update is about is what I spoke about during our last podcast, is that Bruno Le Marie, who is the current Minister of Economy and Finance and holds the presidency of the EU Council right now, meaning he represents all the EU member states, met with the IRS and the U.S. Treasure, Treasury as a whole regarding those U.S. persons, which the majority of them in this instance are accidental Americans, but they're also, you know, American emigrants, you know, emigrants with an E, um, who don't have a Social Security number. And the problem has been is as a result, their accounts have been closed or being closed at their local bank accounts where they live in the EU member states. And they presented to a proposal to the IRS and U.S. Treasury where they would not have to supply a Social Security number or a taxpayer identification number if they meet certain criteria. Oh. And the long and short of it is, is that as long as they only show a link to the United States of a U.S. place of birth, and that is it, then a special code can be put into the respective bank system to bypass having a social security number, hence being able to maintain their account. Now, this has been proposed. It was received positively by the IRS and Treasury. It has not been implemented yet. That will be possibly the next step, and I'll keep uh, you updated. This is actually a good thing for this particular population adversely affected, it certainly doesn't solve the problem for everyone. That's a given. But at least it's some positive step in the right direction. Now, you know, as we have discussed many times before, FATCA is certainly a problem, but that's not the genesis of the problem, which is a taxation. So that is the update. I have at present. Well, that that's fantastic. Well, it's a it's it's an important update. Appreciate it, but and I think it really I should interrupt. I'm sorry. I need to I need to give credit to this has been a push by the Association of Accidental Americans in France. Uh -oh. They pushed to have this meeting. So let me just say that. Forgive me. Go ahead. Well, it actually it flows right into today's topic because as I'm listening to your Keith, it's like well, it sounds like you need to get into some system, not to get into a system. Like, well, as long as you do this, this, and this, meaning process <laughs> some sort of thing with the IRS, sending something to the IRS, well, now you're in the system. Whereas before you weren't, and now you've just raised your hand and say, well, slightly put me into the system, but not really. Well, yeah, in the system to a certain regard, but certainly not in the system for, I mean, taxation purposes. See, that's the thing. It gets a little, calm. it's a little messy. Well, that's because, and, I, I, and yeah. I think well, well, a lot of things start. That's how it all started, Keith. The the, the, the income tax act in 1913 was like, whoa, 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 hold on, it's not going to be affecting you know normal people, just the the richest. So they got <laughs> that's the problem that once the IRS has their foot in the door, and that's the thing. Now, John, what are your feelings on this? Do you think that you could put yourself in a mini system to avoid additional, you know, to never go into a bigger system of the IRS? That doesn't seem um, like it would really work all that well because all the time, I mean, hey, look, our social security number is not supposed to be used for identification, right? So um, how many lies should we accept from, from our own government? I don't know. John, what are your feelings on this? Well, first of all, I think the accidental Americans are no pun intended, but an accidental beneficiary of the meeting. Um, I, I don't 
I think the problem really has to do with the banks worrying about their own compliance under the terms of the IGA, which requires them to get a tax identification number, AKA social security number. And this of course has been a practical problem. So really what's going on here is that the meeting um, I, I think was largely intended to benefit the banks directly so yeah. that the IRS can't say, well, the banks are not in compliance and therefore are subject to penalty. So if the banks cannot fall out of compliance, right, by not, by not having to require social security number, uh, then the banks are happy. They can go on their merry way, uh, you know, not being in a position of having to get rid of accidental Americans. And the accidental Americans are the accidental beneficiaries of this. But the problem remains that the people affected, the individuals subject to US citizenship taxation are not being taken seriously. So, I mean, is that a good thing what happened? Um, probably not in the broader scheme of things because what it does is it uh, ignores the issue which we need to talk about. It ignores what I would call the original sin the original sin of citizenship taxation, which is the United States taking the position that it can pose worldwide taxation on people who don't even live in the United States. So yeah, it's good circumstantially for certain people. It's bad though, for the overall movement to get rid of citizenship taxation. And it's it's something that we have the the it seems like the only people who's getting a response are people who are not um, subject to um, citizenship based taxation these these banks which who are subject to the IGAs to the degree they feel they are but they're not the ones subject they're they are not the taxpayers um, that's Correct. not what they are so that's sort of also disturbing to me that the only people who can get someone's attention it is not it's not the actual people the government should represent but oh well there's a bank well there's a bank we we really should pay attention to them because well you know we're concerned with them you know i mean we're really now i guess after dumping this on them now we're concerned with the banks but i guess the americans oh well you know uh tough well, um, well that's exactly right anthony and and this is i mean it's being on you can see this uh, reflected in the, in the history of this whole movement i mean make no mistake about it the banks generally, and you know, I live in Canada, so I can say without a doubt, the Canadian banks were very, very supportive of the FATCA IGAs. Why? Because it gets the banks off the FATCA hook, but it leaves the individual problems intact. And I actually think that the, you know, that every sort of uh, thing that makes it easier for the banks ultimately makes it harder for the individual. So. You know, I mean, I'm glad that it helps the accidentals get a bank account, but it harms the overall move to solve the problem. Well, you mentioned something about a birth birth defect before. What do you mean by birth defect? What what birth defect are you talking? About? <laughs> well, I don't know that I I said a birth defect, but there is no question that the original sin is citizenship taxation. The U.S. is one of a minority of countries that confers citizenship based only on birth in the country. Uh, the United States is one of two countries that defines tax residency in terms of, uh, of citizenship. Uh, but the United States is the only country in the world that both confers citizenship based on birth in the country and imposes taxation uh, based on citizenship. So you know, the United States stands alone. Okay, well, let, let me, Keith, I have a, uh, give me a hypothetical, Keith. Uh, I am born in the U.S. I, I moved to Paris and I'm working, I'm working there. Um, uh, what happens in that case? As an what happens as an American, meaning as an American, American you're American. American. Do I have to pay, I have to pay U.S. taxes on everything, right? Well, technically, yes. I mean, technically you are taxed on your worldwide income as an American. So what that means is, is that as an American living in uh, France, for example, you have to adhere to the uh, French tax 
system, as any homeland American would do in the United States, but you also have to adhere to the U.S. tax system. And as you can imagine, you have two separate individual, not congruent tax systems to have to uh, adhere to, which creates a major problem. And that major problem. What if it was the other way, Keith? What if I was my my, uh, French equivalent came to to, uh, came to the United States? Um, He came here just to work as on a visa. Um, so what you're saying is that let's say maybe a, like a French expat living in yes. the United States. Yes, exactly. Well, well, with that situation, and the, the, I, Lord knows I have plenty of friends who fall into that category, is that you're a French expat in the United States. So you do pay, uh, depending on your situation, but most of the time you do pay U.S. taxes, okay, in the United States, because that's where you live. Um, because you're not in France, you do not have to adhere and pay any taxes to France. Obviously, there are some exceptions. For example, let's say you have rental property in France, something like that, where there's that type of link. That's a different story, but it's it's a very easy way to adhere to that. But generally speaking, the French do not tax you on your income in the United States because you're living in the United States and you're not living in France. That's residency-based taxation. Well, that's a thank you for that illustration. That's and I, and there. There's really the inherent fa- unfairness, um, and or the the inherent disadvantage to being a U.S. person around the world. It, you know, at least there should just be one um, overlord we should have to worship. But uh, the way the, the IRS works is they make you worship two, and in a way you have to. It, it, and there will be conflicts. And that's the problem. Sometimes you will find conflicts between two different systems and one person um, um, that you cannot be in compliance um, with one and both at the same time. It's very uh, difficult. I, I, something, I'll just give you one example. and We can certainly move on. And it happens to be with France, just coincidentally, is that for, many, for a number of years until it got resolved, there were two French social charges, which are mandatory to pay. OK, in France, it's it's an, it's a tax. Yep. And however, the IRS did not recognize those social right. charges as That's a tax. Right. Yes. Therefore, the 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 American living in France was actually doubly taxed because right. they could they could not um, use those two French social charges, French obligatory taxes on their U.S. tax declaration for, for example, with a foreign um the what is it the foreign earned uh, the foreign earned yep. i'm getting the foreign credit um allowance and it created a major problem and there was a major um um augmentation and renunciations of americans living in france as a result it finally got resolved but this is just a classic example of two systems that are completely different wow so, I mean, these are, and so, and this is the thing, if, say, if you don't like what's going, you're, you're, you're a French citizen, and you don't like what's going on to, in France, you're like, you know what, I'm going to go, uh, go to the, the mountains, uh, Nepal, and I'm going to live it, and I'm going to live there and just sort of get out of things. What's your tax burden? What do you owe France right, right now? Because you, because you, you left France, because you don't like what's going on. What do you owe France? Well, for the average French citizen, yeah. you don't owe anything. You right. finish your, you file for whatever year you left, right? And you move forward, um, unless you have some, you know, like I said, some rental property or something that right. you have to deal with in France. But that's it. So you certainly you don't have to declare your. Let's say you're working in, you know, you don't have to declare your other country's income. And so, and this, and so here's where I'm going with this is because. As we get to, you know, sort of deciding what taxation system is the most fair residency basis and SIP based, you know what, I actually don't even go with that because sales tax can be the only thing I, I require of a tax system is consent, that you actually have consent of the government, whatever it is. And with the residency based taxation system, at least you have this. If you don't like what your country is doing, you can say, I'm not going to participate and go somewhere else. The situation as an American is if you don't like what's going on, leave the country. We're going to hit you even harder, probably. Um, so that there's that 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 the the tax code took away a very important right to protest 
something that you don't want to participate in is that is they took away your ability to remove your consent. Even just walking with your feet say, well, the only way to do that is to renounce yourself as an American person. We'll make that as expensive as possible. Yeah. So that's really where we're saying, like, this is how bad this is. This is this is how bad this is the natural result of of just um, well, there's a lot of reasons that went into into this, but the in, entire creep of the IRS and is something that the IRS can't control anymore. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, John, John can elaborate on this because he wrote, I believe, an article about this in 2019. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the title was that the U.S. has two separate tax systems. And the one for Americans overseas is a very punitive tax system. I mean, I don't want to speak for John. I'll let him elaborate. Yeah, well, John, why, don't, why don't you give us some of the top punishments? <laughs> Can you think of some <laughs> of the top punishments uh, Americans abroad have and that this system creates? Sure. Well, to be very clear on the general principle, uh, for every other country in the world, if you move from the country, you cease to be subject to worldwide taxation by that country. For American citizens, when they leave the United States, first, they continue to be subject to U.S. worldwide taxation. But secondly, they are subject to a set of rules that result in their being taxed and penalized far more punitively than resident Americans. So to put it in real simple terms, you know, for a five-year-old, it's like, hey, if you're not an American citizen and you leave the country, you move from the country, you no longer are going to be taxed. But if you're an American citizen and you leave the country, you're going to get taxed worse. All right. So now the reason for that is because of the U.S., uh, frankly, hatred uh, and punitive reaction to anything that's foreign, whether it's income or whether it's assets. And I can give you a couple of examples, but let's take something incredibly pedestrian. Um, let's imagine that you were, I live in Toronto, Canada, as you may know, which is about an hour and a half from Buffalo, New York. You've probably heard of Franklin Templeton mutual funds. If one were to buy Franklin Templeton mutual funds in Canada, now bear in mind it's the same fund, it's what's called a PFIC, all right, passive foreign investment uh, company, and taxed, I mean, just unbelievably punitive, it's practically confiscation of the gains. But if you were to buy it in Buffalo, New York, it would just get normal investment treatment, dividends, capital gains, et cetera. And that's one example uh, of many that I could give you. I mean, I'm happy to send you a link to one of the articles I've written on this, but make no mistake about it. If you leave the United States, you will be taxed worse. That is for sure. Now, um, I think this is where um, we're gonna wanna get to some questions and, um, the uh, some viewer questions and to follow up on your point though, John, I just did have a fantastic point that you were discussing. Um, um, oh, so for I think this is what we want to do for next week is um, what do you what do you guys want to discuss for next week? And maybe some viewers want to uh, chime in too below in the comments below. But this naturally ties in to um, uh, hang on a second, <laughs> going live here. Um, well, anyway, let's move on to some comments as we have them. So uh, we got a great video up last week and um, I'm gonna ask something here. Um, uh, we have a, a comment from uh, Melvin uh, Piotr. Um, he is an accidental American living in Europe and very much appreciates what we're trying to accomplish. Most US citizens living abroad owe zero US taxes, but the foreign asset accounting reports requirements are just insane. They are destroying our lives on several fronts. And now he reminds me what I'm trying to, to remind me of, um, or he actually did. Nice song, by the way, curious about the full text and lyrics. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, that is the, the the, this is what this channel is. This is what I'm trying to do with this channel. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. We have several disadvantages, but we have a few big advantages. We're talking about tax. Nobody likes to talk about tax. Tax in law school is what everyone avoids. This is just, I mean, lawyers hate tax. Most people in this world can't stand it. It's the quickest way. If you wanted to hide something, you put it in the tax code. And I mean, anything, anything, put it in there. Um, it will all go through. The problem that we have 
is that we're talking about tax and we're also talking about things that don't affect most people. So we're doubly, doubly hammered by two things to try to change this. However, we have some big advantages. The big advantage that we have is people who travel the world, okay, listen to this, tend to be pretty sophisticated and really accomplished. Um, we have some incredible clients and I've met some incredible people around the world. And so what we're trying to do with this channel is give you guys the ammunition you need to bring this up in a conversation with somebody to say, you know what, that's insane. Yeah, and you better watch it if you do it yourself. That's what we need to know because most of this stuff hides in the weeds until, you're, until it affects you and it's too late um, where you're on the phone with some attorney trying to figure out what am I, what happened here? Why is my wife yelling at me? What's going on? So that is really the purpose of this. And so um, anything that um, our audience could do to sort of share successes that you've had and sort of getting this message out there uh, is really appreciated. And that's, you know, um, uh, we're trying to make this a little bit fun too um, to get people yeah. in. Um, yeah, and so, if I may interject, Anthony, yeah. I'd like to add to that, you know, another objective of this, uh, these uh, series of podcasts moving forward is for the three of us to address the reality on the ground. What is real? Not the scaremongering, not the myths, not the misinformation that is put out there, but the true reality on the ground as it pertains to taxation, et cetera, for Americans living overseas. And I would say something like 80% of stuff online is just nonsense. It's written by somebody who doesn't know anything and they're just going off a press release of a press relief. And hey, hey, make uh, put fear, doubt, and in, in, in uncertainty in this person's mind. So they make sure they hire us. And that's the whole, that's the whole point. But the truth is there's dangers, you know, there's dangers all around. Um, oh, the real Joe com the, the real Joe commented, it was great seeing the three of you together again. Hey, thank you. Uh, if you can talk about the Fair Tax as Act as it can be used as a version of, of RBT. Uh, maybe that's something to talk about for next week. That's a pretty good. Um, uh, anything in the Fair ta Tax Act that, that can be used as a version of an RBT. I know what he's saying, but I'm not familiar enough with the Fair Tax Act. Yeah, I'm not either. Maybe we, I don't know. John, are you familiar with the Fair Tax Act? Oh, totally. I've done a couple of podcasts with Steve Hayes. Okay. Okay. This might, this question might be for you then. What what uh, are you able to help him out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what? Would you want to do that next week? It's probably going to be a longer topic. Hey, happy to. Absolutely. All right. Great. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. I'll put that down. Um, uh, vertical wisdom comments. For the last several months, we have tried to open a bank account for a foresty project overseas. Not one bank will allow us to open our project account. I am a U.S. citizen. I am now getting another citizenship so I can announce to go work planting trees, right? And this is what we're talking. I mean, our, 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 uh, our community is just full of, full of great people doing wonderful things around the world. And our passions sometimes involve planting trees. And that's all we want to do. And here is the IRS. Uh, uh, Making it harder to plant trees. Making it yeah. harder to plant trees. Right. Right. And you know, you know what, Anthony, in all fairness, you know, as much as we hate the IRS, they're the only the enforcement arm of all this stuff. It's the U.S., you know, it's the, it's the mentality in the United States and the U.S. Congress that puts these laws into effect and that the IRS has to try to implement. Yeah, that's right. They are, they you are know, the, they with are the lack of resources they have to even take care of homeland American issues. Um, uh, all right, I'm still not going to be in love with them. I'm, I'm, I'm still not. Oh, gonna... no, I agree. I agree. Right, just right. to kind of give a little bit more context. That's all. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, Steve, times, they are the biggest victim of this system, bar none. It's a terrible place to work at. It is an awful place to work at, and my, and, and that, that I do. Well, but Steve, we all have choices. How in this you like right? the IRS trying to figure out how these U.S. rules apply all around the world? Terrible. <laughs> Uh, so we have St Stephen Arve comments. John Richardson makes an excellent point with regards to the TFSA provides a tax credit to U.S. income taxes while other reportable items do not. This illustrates that lawmakers in the U.S. do not comprehend <laughs> the intricacies, deductions, applications of the IJ IGA all over the world with the regards to the impact it has on U U.S. income taxes. Totally right. Um, anything to add on that, John? Except no, I I think that uh, it's 
it, the, the thing is, it's just beyond ridiculous. All right, in so in so many ways. But yeah, I think we need yeah, we need to just you know, I don't know our standard beyond ridiculous. But even for rational, I don't think I don't think Congress would do it. No, right. irrational is more. They don't, they don't they don't trade and operate on the basis of reality or facts. You know, they it's, it's irrational. It something reminds me actually of now and then. 1962 speech at Yale University, right? One of, oh, you should know this, Anthony. No. Uh, you weren't alive then, that's the reason. No, no. <laughs> I was alive, but I wasn't quite old enough. But anyway, so, you know, the, the, the speech to sort of paraphrase was this, okay? The great enemy of the truth is not the lie, but the myth. And then he goes on to, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep, absolutely. What's absolutely yeah. true is that all of these, all of these. That's true. Are just based on fantasy, myths, the leash beans, 200 billion tag, what was it, tax leakage or some, some just yes. so totally preposterous statement that only a sort of a tenured government bureaucrat could possibly get away with saying anything as stupid as that. And not even challenged. And not even challenged. Uh, we got a comment from uh, PV Papa Bear. He says, I totally recommend accidental Americans and Americans living abroad to contact IRS Medic. They really take your situation seriously. Well, that's nice. I'll just say that. Uh, another really appreciated followers like that. Fat, here's a, here's a comment from, I don't know how to say this, ZZX686. Fat could totally ruin my life. As a Swiss citizen who have moved to the US to escape socialism, I was appalled by the leftist agenda. I would say it's both, by the way, yeah. uh, they all come together at the last minute to vote together for all this nonsense. Um, so it is certainly a bipartisan POS. FACA, however, did get to re only two Republican votes, but they probably would have gotten more because the government exists as a fundraising device for every politician. So the more awful it is, the greater need it is for you to write them a check to protect you from the things that they vote into law. Right. Right. Um, so and, and I remind people, I remind people that, you know, and again, I, I try to, I try to be fair that people are talking about the Democrats and FATCA. And I do agree. There's Obama's FATCA, quote unquote, but there's also Trump's TCGA transition tax and guilty. Yes. And yes. so you, you get it from both sides. It's not just one side and the other. Now, mind you right now, I happen to feel that the Democrats, Democrat side is a little bit more, you know, looking to terrorize Americans overseas. But nevertheless, it's from both sides. And well, I think that's the thing, too, is they work in conjunction. It's a good cop, bad cop thing. And don't fall for it. That's all it is. It's good cop, bad cop. But, you know, and, but, but, you know, here's the thing. In 1913, every Republican was against the income tax. Interesting. How many are right now? So you see how, oh, well, well, you know, it provides us a lot of money though, right? Well, I know it's bad, but we also like the money. So all of a sudden these principled Republicans say, oh, uh, what do you come to? It's fine. Oh, it, oh, the Supreme Court ruled on it. It's fine. <laughs> um, we got to move on. Our next comment is right, right. This is the comment. This is, I think this is the comment of the week. Love you guys sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was awesome. And I think our last comment we're going to talk about, because we got to get going, um, is from Amy Purcell. She says something pretty inspiring here. She says, I love the song. And uh, gentlemen, I was practicing this morning a little bit. I was. Um, and uh, let's see if I can get it out. Is it is the camera on me or is it on Keith still? It is on you, Anthony. It is on me. All right. That's just my, my last. All right. So let me see if I can get this going here. So um, let's see here. I have a little problem with the chorus, but let's see, maybe I'll get lucky. Um, so this is a song I've been working on. It is suggested by another, by the great John Richardson. Um, a cover song I'm writing of uh, Doris Day, a, oh, Doris Day's version, a sen sentimental version. I found- Sentimental journey. Sentimental, right, sentimental. Um, I found uh, some guitar music online, so I've, I've adjusted it. So let's just see how, what, what do we got here? You guys let me know how, I'll do a sound check here. I might be a little loud there. I was a baby when I left New York City. My mama brought me home to Paris. I was a baby when I left New York City. 
of what it is you need. Got a letter from my wife's corner banker about my American criminality. I was born an awful tax slave. I born my birth back from the land of the free. Never thought my soul would be so heavy. What did I do that was so wrong? If my parents went to school in Moscow, I could be me. I wish I missed this accidental journey. I wish I could be me. I like that, Anthony. Right. I'll Very good. And by and any other, uh, we will take, we'll do open source lyrics on this. So I'll put it in the description below and any comments you want to add to this, adjust. And I know there are some fantastic music, uh, musicians uh, and producers watching this channel. So I am happy to do anything with this. I think um, if we get a string, I think if we get a string of songs, we could have a Broadway musical. I think so. And, and, and by the way, we have, this is, and by the way, gentlemen, um, I'm surprised. I, there is construction going on at my place. Oh, they've been quiet so far. I am uh, converting my old office now that we've gone fully remote into, oh, there they are, uh, into an inn. So um, your rooms are getting ready. And uh, there's also a stage in the basement and a piano. So it's going to be quite a, probably September around September. We might want to get this scheduled in. Um, we Maybe we'll do this live. Um, Sounds good. Thank All right, guys. Idea. Well, so so we know our, we know what we're going to be talking about next week, and we'll be responding to comments, questions um, anyone has. Uh, for John Richardson and Keith Redmond, this is Anthony Parent of IRS Medic, and thank you so much for watching and participating.